Welcome to the Can Do Math Support Video 5. This one focusing on how do I help my child with work out G. The, these are word problems. So, so how do I solve word problems? What, what are the strategies? Well, here we go. This, this is what we mean by word problems. There's a, a situation is described. So there's Colin. He's planting 360 bulbs in the first one. He plants the same number of bulbs in each pot. There are nine pots. And the question is, how many bulbs does he plant in each pot? The next one's about jogging. Then there's about apples and sweets. Something that's really helpful is, is maybe to think about the situation yourself. Going, okay, I've got 360 bulbs. Cool, what have I got to do? I've got to put the bulbs in different pots. I've got nine pots. One of the things we, we find useful at Can Do Maths is, is sometimes drawing a picture just helps me to think about the structure of this. As it says at the top, is it division? Is it multiplication? I don't know, you know, a lot of children may just dive in and do something with the numbers. Um, they may multiply them, they may add them, subtract them, without thinking about it. So, we have this thing called the four C's, where we consider the problem, we try and construct a picture. We do the calculations that we need to do once we've worked, once we've drawn that picture, once we've constructed it. And then, of course, we always check, check that the answer makes sense. What's nice for that first question, here's my colleague Liz, who, who will talk through how she would use what we call the four C's framework to solve that problem. Work out G is a worded problem. So we're thinking about how we can solve a problem using what we know. So what we might want to find useful here is a sort of process for solving problems. This is something we use called Collins four C's. So the first thing to do is consider the problem. If we take the top one here, just think about it. What's it to do with? Imagine the problem. Collins planting 360 bulbs. He plants the same number of bulbs in each pot. There are nine pots. How many bulbs does he plant in each pot? Okay, so it's thinking about consider the problem. Imagine it, if you were planting bulbs, you've got the nine pots there. You're gonna put the same number in each, bulb, each pot. So you're really imagining the story. So that's asking yourself, what does it mean? Okay, so that's one of the questions to ask is what does it mean? Think about what do you notice about the problem? Is there anything to consider about it? Thinking about the fact that we've got the same number in each pot. So we're thinking about equal amounts. This next bit is construct. So it's thinking, what does it look like? So that's your third question. So is there anything that you can unpick the problem. What does it look like? I'm going to draw a bar to represent the total, 360 bulbs. And the fact that it's 360 at the moment doesn't matter. This is the total number of bulbs here. And what am I going to do? I'm going to plant them in each pot, OK? So let's draw a pot. There's a pot and another pot. And you think, oh, hang on, I know something. There's nine pots, OK? So I'm going to be, I've got an image now for my bulbs being divided equally. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's my nine pots. Then I can start to consider what my calculation is going to be because I'm dividing my number of bulbs equally between my nine pots. So with each problem, consider it first. Can you construct something to represent it? What's the calculation? And then once you've got an answer, check. Does it make sense? Three questions to start with. What does it mean? What do you notice about the problem? What does it look like? Thanks, Liz. I hope you found that useful. A very, very powerful framework. I think we would all agree. You'll also notice, by the way, at the end of every word problem, there's always a little sentence that says, now create your own problems for this certain calculation. That's very powerful for your children. Yes, here are some word problems for you to solve. But it's also good that children become problem creators as well as problem solvers. So have some fun with your children. P pick some context that are relevant to your family, maybe, to your house, and see if they can come up with some problems for different calculations. We always have an example, so 258 divided by 6 in this case. So some top tips. When you look at a word problem, before you dive in, just, just pause and go, ooh, consider. What does this mean? What have I actually got to do? What do I notice about the problem? Am I told I've got so many things in total? Or am I told I've got this and someone else has got another part? So how much altogether? 
Um, those words are quite critical altogether, or how much does each person get? Because that when I draw a picture then, and a bar like Liz drew is very powerful, it tells me where I put the certain numbers. So I hope that was useful. Enjoy solving your word problems and um, have lots of fun.